Okay. All right, that's my patio. Hi there, everybody. My husband is acting as our Storm Tracker School photographer today, so thank you, husband, for doing that. We had rain last night. We had thunderstorms last night. We probably could have seen a rainbow maybe early this morning. Yesterday, we talked about optics and rainbows on our storm tracker school. I'm meteorologist Samantha Moore, one of your 11 Alive storm trackers. And since we are all working from home, we thought it was a great opportunity to have storm tracker school from each of our individual homes. So Chesley, Wes Peary, Chris and I are all teaming up to help in this efforts for weather school to teach you more about the weather. And it's aimed primarily at kids at home who have homeschooling to do. I know by this afternoon you'll have the great opportunity to get outside as the skies will start to clear and we'll have some sunshine. But right now it's time to focus on cloud types. And I thought this would be an excellent thing to follow rainbows, which we did yesterday, because cloud types are very important. They tell us things about the weather. They help us forecast the weather. So today the focus is on kind of our three basic types of cloud types with one bonus cloud type thrown in there that's my personal favorite that I thought would be fun to talk about. So if you look up, um, my hubby photographer, maybe you can see that patches of blue sky. What we have now are some stratocumulus clouds. We're seeing the cumulus clouds kind of all clumped together. They are not social distancing. When you think of your typical cumulus cloud, and we'll talk and show, we'll make a cumulus cloud in a minute. If you have some cotton balls, get your cotton balls ready and your glue because we'll be able to kind of simulate a cumulus cloud as well as our other cloud types too. Um, I'm actually using an old pillow. If your mom lets you and have a really old pillow that you were getting ready to throw away, then you can use the stuffing from inside of an old pillow. The foam ones won't work, but those with that white stuffing will work very, very well. So within the next few hours, I think what we're going to see is our cumulus, stratocumulus clouds breaking up into cumulus clouds. They will be social distancing. They will be breaking up. They'll be few and far between. And then by the afternoon, we will see plenty of blue sky. But once again, as we look up, we're only seeing a few patches of blue sky because these cumulus clouds are stratocumulus and they are getting together. And I'm telling them they need to distance themselves so that they stay healthy. So they need to break apart and then they will be what we call fair weather cumulus. I think that's my second favorite type of cloud, fair weather cumulus. They're those puffy cotton ball clouds. So let's go make some, oh, oops, make some fair weather cumulus. We're inside the house now. And um, here I gotta log back on because my computer went to sleep mode. And so this right here on the screen, if you can see it, is what we would call a fair weather cumulus cloud. And we're going to be seeing that as we head to this afternoon and things start to improve. We'll see a lot more in the way of these guys. These guys are good social distancers. They are keeping their space between themselves and they are perfect fair weather clouds. So I told you, if you have some cotton balls, this is a really great thing. Maybe some in some, some vitamin bottles that you haven't opened yet. Maybe there'll be some cotton. Maybe you have a bag of cotton balls. That's perfect. Of course, I nowadays use those wonderful little cotton squares to take my makeup off. However, these are not good for making clouds. They stink at making clouds. I'm like, why don't I have a cotton ball? I guess I buy these because they're a little neater. They're not as fuzzy and they don't leave fuzzies on your face, but when you wanna do a cloud experiment, you need something that's a little fuzzier, right? Or I shouldn't say, it's more of a cloud demo. It's not really a cloud experiment. It's more of a cloud demo. So I had an old pillow that was ready to go anyway. It had been in the guest room for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. So it was ready for it to go. So it has been sacrificed for this, but we're looking at making fair weather cumulus clouds first. That is our first cloud. and. Um, that's what we're gonna be seeing a lot of tonight. They're gonna to be puffy. These clouds happen when there's moisture in the atmosphere, typically at low levels. So we're gonna make, it could be anywhere from 1,000 to 2,500 feet. So we're gonna make these at around 2,500 feet. So those are fairly low level clouds. 
And what happens is the moisture that's in the atmosphere starts to rise. And as it rises, that moisture condenses and it hits against little pieces of pollution and dust in the atmosphere. And these little particles of moisture start to coalesce. So these are puffy, puffy little clouds that seem to float through the air. And these are the ones like if you're going to the park and it's a nice, beautiful day and you see breaks of blue sky, in between them, this is uh, cumulus, and it comes from the Latin word uh, cumulo, which means heap or pile. So it's like a little pile of moisture, a little heap of moisture, and they are really fun to look at. They kind of look like little popcorn clouds. They're really pretty and really sweet. Now, if we want to make this permanent, we can use some tacky glue. My tacky glue is a little bit thick right now, so I don't necessarily see uh, the reason we have to glue it. So I don't think I am right now since we can show you what they are without gluing. But this is the variety we're gonna be seeing this afternoon and it's gonna be really nice to get out. Just in the next couple hours, we'll start to see that fair weather cumulus popping up. So that is our first variety of cloud, the cumulus cloud. Most people love them, they look pretty. It's almost nicer to have a blue sky with puffs of clouds rather than just a plain blue sky. I kinda like seeing the clouds out there because they think they make things look uh, more colorful. So next up to that is the stratocumulus cloud. We were lucky to live in San Francisco for a number of years, and San Francisco is famous for their, their strato, stratus cloud. They are um, famous for fog, right? The fog comes in through the bridge. That's a stratus cloud. Basically, a stratus cloud can often cling to the ground or very close to the ground, and we refer to that as fog, but it's basically a cloud on the ground. And when it's widespread and covers a large area, we call it a stratus cloud. So stratus clouds generally cover a large area. Now, this is a picture more of strato Q, I would call it, strato cumulus, because it's a little puffy looking. But basically, it's a cloud that forms very low to the ground, and stratus is Latin for layer. So a stratus cloud, it's very, very close to the ground. Like what we have right now is stratocumulus. When we were outside, that is stratocumulus. Let's peek outside again, just to, to give you a refresher. And again, I'm Samantha Moore, one of your 11 Alive Storm Trackers, if you just joined us. And this is Storm Tracker School because everybody's learning at home. So we're learning about clouds today. Oh, good. Hey, hey, husband, look up there. We've got, I think in the next hour or so, we're going to end up seeing uh, things clear out a bit and we'll have those nice fair weather cumulus. But right now, technically, it is strato cumulus, stratus types of clouds. And that's why it looks kind of gray out there. So we're gonna come back inside. We got our stratus cloud here. And again, that layer. So all of our cloud types come from Latin words. Those Latins, they were very smart people. So it's like a layer of clouds. And that's what fog is, but it would be on the ground. So where we are, you've noticed how much fog we've had lately, especially in the mornings, and it looks gray and dense at the surface. That is a stratus cloud. And if it's on the ground, we call it fog. That's our ground. Let me scoop that out of the way. So this is, this is, this is you. And here is when it's fog. And when it starts to lift throughout the day, there it goes. It may be up around 2,000 feet in a big layer, like a layer cake, and that makes it look kind of gray. Kind of gray, looks kind of gray outside right now, but very soon, as it starts to break up, the stratus are going to become more like this. They're gonna become more like this. They're gonna get more like our cumulus friends over here and we'll have the pieces of blue sky sticking in between. And then by this afternoon, I think it'll look more like this. And then maybe you'll need to have a few clouds out there with our blue sky. But right now, as we saw outside, it's pretty much this. It's widespread with little peaks of blue out there. But luckily we'll see more peaks of blue later on this afternoon and our cumulus clouds, our fair weather cumulus will be the winners. Okay. Next up is a high-level cloud. It's made not of moisture droplets, but um, moisture droplets that have frozen ice crystals. So 
Let me see if I can scroll down and get to that. Oops, I have to click once. Okay, that is a cirrus cloud. Those form way up at the jet stream level sometimes. They are made of uh, ice crystals because it's much, much colder up in the atmosphere. Of course, it's warmer here at the surface. So what we may see as a temperature here right now of 60 degrees, I haven't checked this hourly, say, hey, Hey Siri, what's the temperature outside? Let's see what it says. It's 61 degrees right, right now. That's pretty close. Okay, so around 60 degrees. Up here, it may be, let's just say it's negative two Fahrenheit. We're talking Fahrenheit. So what happens as the moisture rises way, 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 way up in the atmosphere, we start to see cirrus clouds. And those are very fine. And the word, the Latin word for cirrus is hair. Is, it comes from the root word hair, excuse me. So they often call these kind of clouds mare's tails, mare's tails. And they're important because they generally give us an indication there's change coming. Like long before our frontal system moves through Alabama or Tennessee heading in our direction and weather generally moves from west to east in our country and here in Georgia, generally. Um, then if we see these high clouds moving in, those are well in advance of a frontal system or a change in the weather and they often indicate that we could be seeing weather kind of going downhill if you consider storms going downhill, which most of us do. Um, as that front approaches, we'll often see those, these mare's tails. They look like this, high, wispy, wispy clouds that are uh, called mare's tails. And that's those high ice crystal clouds that also can make for something called a halo around the sun or a halo around the moon. We talked about rainbows yesterday. That's when uh, the sun gets broken into the Roy G. Biv colors the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, the indigo, and the violet. Well, that can also happen up around the sun. So if you have high cirrus clouds, these ice crystals can break down all the colors of light, which is white light, which is broken down into all the different wavelengths of light, the Roy G. Biv. But when you have high cirrus clouds instead of raindrops, it can break down the sunlight so if you have the sun here shining through and you get some cirrus ice crystals over it, you can get a halo around the sun sometimes, you see. It looks like a little rainbow around the sun. Or you can get something called sun dogs. Not like this dog. This is Tahoe, our Labrador. He is a good weather dog, and he's a bad weather dog. He likes to be out in all kinds of weather, but um, he's a very good dog, good weather dog. You being a good weather dog today? Yes, he's being a very good weather dog today. Thank you, Tahoe, for participating in our Storm Tracker School. And uh, thank you all for participating in Storm Tracker School. Um, sun dogs, by the way, they aren't, they don't look like dogs. This comes from Greek mythology. When you see uh, that light broken down into like a little weird optical illusion looking thing. So it's not exactly a halo like uh, the Sears cloud would make, but it refracts the light. So you see like a little weird mirror looking thing on each side of the sun. And over the years they've become, they become known as sun dogs, but it's the same concept as our rainbow. It's just that the light is being bent in a certain way to make it look like the sun has a couple pets, sun dogs. So that again is a look at our cloud. So what are our three basic cloud types? We've got our cumulus that we're going to be seeing very shortly as our alto cumulus breaks up. We'll have nice blue sky in between. It's going to be a really nice afternoon today, warm temperatures. Uh, pollen's up, unfortunately, for us allergy sufferers, but overall, pretty nice spring day, especially after the storms we had last night. Um, and then here's our stratus. Okay, so that's what we're seeing right now, and eventually it's going to break up into cumulus. And then here is our 
are cirrus, those high, fine, pretty mare's tail clouds. And they usually mean that weather's really nice, but it could be changing in the next several hours. Oh, my favorite kind of cloud. I almost forgot. <laughs> almost forgot my favorite kind of cloud of all. Oh, we may need more stuffing, husband. Let's see, I don't know, maybe you'll be able to do it. Okay, so my favorite cloud is called, it's kind of a type of cumulus cloud, but it's called cumulo nimbus. So you have your heap or pile. So we're gonna add one more type of cloud here. At the bottom, it starts out warm. So this is cumulo nimbus. Cumulo, as we learned earlier, is heap or pile. Nimbus is where it gets really fun. Nimbus means rain. So anytime you have nimbus on a cloud, cumulo nimbus, strato nimbus, anytime you add nimbus to the bottom of a cloud or to the end of a cloud word, it means rain cloud. So what happens is you get, oh, let's get, oh, the moisture starts building, the air parcel starts rising and cooling and coalescing and those little particles are bumping into each other and we're starting to get things building. This happened overnight last night when the storms moved in and that uh, system brought in those thunderstorms. So what happens is they build and they build and they build all the way up. They can build all the way up to the jet stream level. And then it's technically, this is called a towering cumulonimbus, towering. Sometimes in the summertime, if you stand still enough, you can watch them build right in front of your eyes, or you can time lapse it on your iPhone, and that's really cool too, to see them just billow up like that. It's so cool. And if they reach the jet stream level, hang in there. Gotta get more pillow stuffing. Again, do not destroy a pillow if your mom doesn't know about it, because she could be really mad. And then you may get stuck in time out in uh, weather in a storm tracker school. We don't want that. Okay, this is going to be our anvil top. So, for example, let's say this is the jet stream now. Let's say it's moving around 35,000 feet and it's moving at around 300 miles an hour. Well, what that does is that blows the top of that towering cumulonimbus. So it makes an anvil, anvil kind of shaped like a metal anvil, an anvil top. And that can mean that we're gonna have some big time thunderstorms as it creates lift in the atmosphere when you have a jet streak or jet stream that's pulling that anvil top or pulling the top of the cumulonimbus cloud, stretching it out like that. That can mean storms are forming and out of the bottom of this thing, you can see driving rain, and what we call lightning. So that is the symbol, that's the official symbol for lightning. So if you ever see this in a weather report, that means lightning is a happening. And of course, that's a whole nother story we'll be talking on, about on the Storm Tracker School next week. We'll talk about lightning, how it happens, how to stay safe, why it is so dangerous. I mean, it is electricity, right? So. You have to be careful with electricity. But um, again, I'm Samantha Moore, one of your 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Big props to my hubby cameraman today. We appreciate that. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Storm Tracker School. And thank you to all my junior storm trackers because we need you. We need you to keep your family safe and to have a plan in times of severe weather. So uh, we thank you for joining us today. We'll see you very, very soon right here on Storm Tracker School. Bye.